Matt, who are you working with on this? Great job solving for the first one. Based on the law of conservation of mass, the mass of the reactants, X plus Y, should equal the mass of the products. So if you have two samples, you can add them together, and you have the mass of the reactants. So they're saying, what is the mass of the reactants? So you just add up X and Y. So you know, you're forming Y too, but um, if you're given two samples, and you're given a 13 gram sample of X combines with 34 grams of Y, uh, your mass of the reactants are going to be what you have on hand. Um, you're not going to form, you're going to have a little bit, uh, a lot of that comes in with limiting reactants. We'll talk more about that later. Now part two, we're looking at two different compounds. This is kind of what we built on Monday. If you have, let's say, an unidentified substance in somebody's automobile, typically it's not going to be exactly associated with the mass in the periodic table. And we learned that the law of definite proportions says that every carbon atom is the same. And that's how we can take the mass of carbon here divided by our sample, and we get a ratio. The mass of oxygen divided by the oxygen sample, and we get a ratio. We take the smallest number divided by itself, and you get one. So we do that with the second compound, and we got a one to two ratio. So both of them contain carbon and oxygen, and you can see the ratios here. Um, you'll see this in life. A lot of substances contain carbon. There are a lot of organics out there. And that's why this works really well for us to determine what the unknowns are. All right, so we completed table 9.5 in the book where we have our ratios. Table 3.8, they're just asking to find the percents of the substance. Typically, you have a total mass, and then you find out the mass of the oxygen determine the percents. Now they're being really nice to you here in that the mass of the oxygen is 16 grams. They don't always have to do that. You can have a, an unknown substance in the wild, but you should be able to break it down and determine the percents so you can determine what the compound is based on the law of definite proportions. It'll, it'll, you know, you'll be able to identify that it's CuO compared to CuO2 just by the masses of the carb are the copper present and the mass of the carbon present. You see how they're different? It would show up differently or it would show up in the wild the same way if you had a, a substance you were trying to identify that was unknown. So of a substance and you're trying to figure out what it is and then you determine like 48 grams of it is oxygen and you can determine the percent oxygen in the uh, copper oxide. 1.01 grams of nitrogen and 1.99 grams of oxygen. They want to know the formula. So can anybody come up here and solve that for us? I'll give you uh, 10 points bell work if you can do that. This is pretty tricky. It was done like the last three we've shown you. So I'll give you, say, three minutes to try it on your own, and then I'll, I'll try to help you with it. Hunter, are you helping him out? Yeah. He's close. Now, do you see a subscript? Well, actually, you could simplify that to one to one. There's no subscript there behind or to the bottom of the CU. It's just blank. So you're going to assume that means it's a one, just like there was no subscript here. Now, a subscript is like water. Did everybody see the two there? H2O. So the two tells you you have how many of them? Two. two. So it's pretty simple. So this is really a one-to-one -one ratio. If you were close, Layton. Now to know this for sure, we have to go back to what we learned at the beginning of the week, that elements always have the first letter capitalized and the second letter is lowercase. So you know you have just one substance here. Now you could put a one right here and a one right here, but people don't do that because it's just a lot of extra information you don't necessarily need. We're just assuming you understand there's just one there. That's kind of overkill. Does everybody see this is kind of a little bit of overkill here? Anybody not see that? That's a one to one. So can anybody come up here and do the, the third one, H2O? All right, uh, Florentia, Florentina. Here's the pen right here. Or a 
at Kroger. Um, they're going to have an inventory of your reactants. You're going to order things. So the inventory here is 13 grams of X and 34 grams of Y. So your total should be 47. What happens if it's not, uh, Skylar? Somebody's probably stolen from you. Uh, there was a case where a bank was stealing money from a, an old lady or everybody really. They were just taking a penny off everybody's account, and the old lady you know, noticed that she was missing a penny and went to the bank. And they'd been doing it for a couple of years, and they were able to catch the person. I heard yesterday there was a person working at a restaurant that was eating, eating like three slices of ham and one slice of turkey every day. Guess how much they're going to try to sue her for? A million. Uh, $9,000. They figured that she had consumed $9,000 worth of food that she hadn't paid for. So you can do dimensional analysis based on if you know how much the slice weighs, its cost, over so many years that she worked. You can come up with a price. That would be the retail price. They're not giving her a discount. They're asking for a 15% solution of, of NaCl. So the water is going to be the salt. Typically in chemistry, the water is the solvent.